Hello, I'm Bill Duffin and welcome to the NFSTC Forensic Update. Hard to believe, but 2014 is slowly winding down. As you finalize next year's budget, don't forget to allocate funds for an external DNA audit from our professional courteous team. Whether public or private, NFSTC is equipped to meet the rigorous FBI quality assurance standards for DNA databasing and forensic DNA laboratories. To schedule your audit or receive a quote, email us at assessment at nfstc.org. From the lab to the field, rapid DNA technology is living up to its name. By creating a DNA profile in as few as 90 minutes, it's quickly getting the attention of law enforcement agencies across the globe. The Arizona Department of Public Safety has been training officers to use rapid DNA equipment since April. NFSTC's communication specialist Michelle Chernikoff sat down with Vince Figarelli, superintendent of the Arizona DPS Crime Laboratory, to discuss the benefits and challenges to using this high-tech breakthrough. Thanks, Bill. Joining me today is Vince Figarelli from the Arizona Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Vince, for joining us. We appreciate your time. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're actually implementing the rapid DNA technology in the field in the state of Arizona? Sure, yes. Um, our rapid hit program here in Arizona consists of the uh, Intigenx Rapid Hit 200 instrument. Uh, and we have, currently we have two of them, uh, and we're going to purchase a third, and we're going to spread them out around the state. And the Rapid Hit 200 is going to be used or is being used by officers in the field to run certain types of DNA samples. And once they run the samples, they can search them against, uh, we call it the Arizona DNA database, and hopefully get investigative leads. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're using the rapid DNA technology in the field? Well, a couple of years ago, I, I uh, became aware of, first of all, the rapid hit instrument uh, being mature enough to be relied upon to actually do the analysis without, you know, without a high failure rate. In addition, I also became aware of the small pond software and uh, putting the two together could give you a system that could immediately, uh, that could be used to immediately analyze samples by the officers and they could immediately get investigative lead information to hopefully solve crimes uh, very rapidly or to apprehend suspects very rapidly. And thus far, we started the program in April, and we have about 30 officers who are trained, and we've had about 15 cases where this uh, technology and the system has been used. And we've had a number of hits uh, where uh, detectives or officers have been able to apprehend uh, suspects very rapidly uh, using the system, no pun intended. Well, at least it's living up to its name. Now, if you are implementing new technology, there's got to be challenges and obstacles that your department has to face. Can you tell us a little bit about what you did in the state of Arizona? Well, the first challenge with the new system is it, it is truly, uh, you know, very new technology, new technology to us, new technology absolutely to the officers. So when we first purchased the instrument, the first instrument about a year, year and a half ago, uh, we put it through its paces in the laboratory because we also have an instrument that we're using in the laboratory. Uh, right now, you can use these instruments uh, for running standards uh, for use in casework. Uh, but we put the instrument through its paces. That was, uh, that was one challenge, just learning this new instrumentation. It basically takes uh, several instruments in the laboratory and rolls them into one. Uh, you know, you, you're doing your extraction and uh, you don't really do a quantitation, but you do an amplification. So all that's being done in this single instrument. Uh, that was one challenge. The other challenge was, since we were planning on using this uh, for officers to use, we had to develop the officer training program. And it's a week-long training program. We take 10 officers through. We, we teach them basic biology. We teach them forensic biology, forensic DNA, and also how to operate the instrument. And then on the back end, once they've run the instrument, run the samples, how to evaluate the electropherograms of these single source profiles. And that's an important thing to know is that that all these samples that they're running are presumed single source profiles with a, a large amount of DNA. So there's very little ambiguity with regard to interpretation of the samples. Since putting rapid DNA technology into these officers' hands in April, what kind of successes has your department seen? 
the typical case that I, and we've actually had one like this, the typical case that I use where this is perfect is a, uh, a burglary scene where a uh, broken window, the perpetrator has cut themselves and left blood at the point of entry uh, of the burglary scene. And that's the, that's the uh, quintessential property crime type of case where this is very useful. Uh, the officer can take a swab of that blood, uh, take it to the instrument and have an officer who's certified to run the sample uh, actually run it and get a DNA profile within two hours and then search it and hopefully get a name returned uh, for an investigative lead if the perpetrator was already in the database as an arrestee or an offender. Uh, the other, the other uh, ways that can be used, identification of victims. Uh, we recently had a, a burn victim in the state who is very, very severely burned and by collecting some uh, secondary standards from the individual's home, they were able to run samples from the burn victim as well as those secondary standards and immediately be able to identify that individual. Uh, and we've also had some, some violent crimes where, you know, if there's more than enough sample, uh, you know, if a suspect it gets shot and leaves blood behind at the scene, then you can run that. That has occurred. Uh, so there's all types of different cases where you know, investigative leads are provided very quickly where if you chose the or you use the traditional path of sending the sample to the laboratory, while the laboratory can in certain circumstances run stuff very quickly, uh, you know, my laboratory can get stuff done within 24 hours if it's a, you know, a, a uh, threat to public safety and we have a, a sample that's amenable to that, we can do a sample within 24 hours but nothing is going to beat the two hours that an officer can get an answer within uh, two hours using the rapid hit instrument. As more and more agencies start looking at putting rapid DNA into their arsenal, what advice would you like to give them? I think anybody who uses this technology in the field for officers really needs to have a training program for the officers and that's why we put together or my staff put together the training program uh, for the officers here in Arizona. Uh, the other thing I would say is that if you're going into using this rapid technology in the field, uh, you need to have a database to compare things to. And it's, it's wonderful to have it uh, you know, for routine analysis, but it's also very expensive. Um, this program that we put together uh, kind of marries the, the uh, rapid analysis with the ability to search the database, and, and that's, that's somewhat unique. Nobody else has done that. And I, I you know, fully advocate it. It's providing investigative leads very, very quickly to the investigators. How do you see this technology changing investigations in the future? Uh, well, I, I would say that uh, more states will probably be taking a good look at this. Uh, the, the rapid hit instrument is a very, very powerful tool for investigations. And if you talk to any, you know, the, uh, the, Chiefs and the sheriffs in my state have been very supportive, and when they hear about some of the successes, uh, they recognize that it's a tool that's, that's very, very useful. Um, there's no way that uh, my laboratory could pri prioritize a property crime over a violent crime to do it in 24 hours, much less the two hours that, uh, if there's sufficient sample, that an investigator could run it on the rapid hit. Vince, thanks for your time today. We appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you very much. While a full profile is generated by rapid DNA, it's not yet approved to be entered into CODIS by law enforcement agencies. However, the FBI has recently announced an active collaboration to integrate rapid DNA profiles from qualifying arrestees and offenders into a new biometric identification database. Students at Pinellas Park High School's Criminal Justice Academy couldn't even drive when they started a project aimed at putting a Fallen Heroes tag into production in the state of Florida but that didn't stop them from lobbying for three years for support. This month, the plates were made available for pre-sale at the Florida DMV. Operation 1024, the code for Officer Down, Officer in Distress, was started in 2011 after the loss of three St. Petersburg police officers in the line of duty. The tags will benefit the Police and Kids Foundation and support police officer training and education. Stop by any Florida tax collector or license plate agency to show your support for this great cause. The University of Tampa's Forensic Science degree program got a big boost this semester. NFSTC, along with the FBI, Hillsborough Medical Examiner's Office, and Thermo Fisher Scientific, donated 12 pieces of laboratory equipment, 
valued at over $230,000. All of the equipment we donated to the University of Tampa is of the type and quality that's used on a daily basis by operational forensic labs, like ours here in Largo, Florida. By exposing these future scientists to this advanced technology, we can give them a hands-on experience before they step foot in their first operational lab. UT faculty will also utilize the equipment to further their own research. This donation also comes as the department is in the process of receiving accreditation by the Forensic Science Education Program's Accreditation Commission, or FEPAC. Before we close out this edition of the Forensic Update, we wanted to say thank you to everyone who voted for the Forensic Innovation Center Mission Main Street grant. The FIC proposal to use the $150,000 grant to continue the ROTC and STEM programs is now being reviewed by panelists who will award 20 small businesses from across the country. The announcement will be made sometime in January. To learn more, visit www.the-fic.com. Well, that's it for this edition of the Forensic Update. For the latest news and updates from NFSTC, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. For Michelle Chernikoff and everyone here at NFSTC, I'm Bill Duffin, and we'll see you next time.